Your Excellency, Premier, distinguished guests, members of the Swinburne community. We are gathered here today to celebrate the installation of the Foundation Chancellor of Swinburne University of Technology. In so doing, Swinburne becomes a link in an academic chain stretching back to the European Middle Ages. The occupation of Chancellor appears to have risen through the ranks quite quickly. Initially a scribe or clerk of the chamber, chancellors advanced to become advisers or conscience keepers and then to be figures of serious political import. References to the office of the chancellor in an academic context are documented as early as 1473 and by 1615 the chancellor's role as the head of a university was clearly defined. Traditionally, a university chancellor was a leading political figure at court, bringing the power of the state to bear in any disputes. Maintenance of discipline and morals was a part of the early chancellor's role. In 1567, Sir William Cecil, then Chancellor of Cambridge, warned the university to tighten up its discipline and to repress the lightness and disorder of your youth, as well in apparel as other behaviour. In 1636, Archbishop Bland, then Chancellor of Oxford, was exhorting tutors to look to their students' dress, boots and the wearing of the hair. But this moral fortitude had a worldly foundation. The Chancellor was uh, instrumental in generating endowment income, which in turn was influenced by the perceived good reputation of the university. The contemporary Chancellor is uh, relieved of the duties relating to the disorders of youth, boots and the wearing of the hair, but will be ever mindful of the need to generate endowment income. In the 1990s, a Chancellor is a distinguished public figure who can bring to bear a wealth of expertise and experience, usually gained outside the academic environment. He or she presides over meetings of the university's governing body, chairs numerous committees and plays an important role as titular head of the university on ceremonial occasions. In 1967, at a ceremony to mark the installation of the Foundation Chancellor of La Trobe University, Sir Charles Macdonald, then Chancellor of the University of Sydney, painted a mischievous, uh, if perhaps accurate, picture of the role of a Chancellor when he said, he will soon learn, as I have learnt, where the real power lies. The Vice Chancellors meet from time to time in secret conclave. They determine the policy for all our universities and force the governing bodies to implement their Vice Chancellorial decisions. It is all a vicious conspiracy. Then in the semi-darkness you have the professorial boards, suspicious as ever, wanting to know what the vice chancellors are up to. And then in the darkness beyond lie the association of university teachers, ready like cats to spring to the attack if they think that their privileges are in any way in jeopardy. Yes, we lead a happy life. A chancellor can choose to be a figurehead or he or she can choose to be involved. The opportunity to influence and be party to the direction and development of the university is there. We welcome our Foundation Chancellor and look forward to his interpretation of this, his newest role and challenge. The university was named to commemorate its founder, George Swinburne. Today I am pleased to introduce Sir Rupert Hamer, who will speak on the life and work of the Honourable George Swinburne.